So to set up gravitational potential energy, let's start by remembering what we learned about the work done by the gravitational force. So when you have an object that sits in a constant gravitational field, the question becomes in which direction does the gravitational force pull on a mass? And of course the gravitational force is going to pull the mass downward. So if you've got an object sitting out there, gravitational force is going to point down, it's going to have a magnitude of mg, and so that when the object moves down, you know that the gravitational force does positive work. On the other hand, when the object moves up, gravitational force does negative work because now the force and the displacement point in opposite directions. The change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to negative the work done by the gravitational force. What this means is, is that the gravitational potential energy increases when a mass moves up, it decreases when a mass moves down, and the gravitational potential energy remains the same when a mass stays at the same height. So this minus sitting here in front of the work term means that thinking about how the gravitational potential energy is changing is going to be negative how we think about the work. Gravitational force does positive work when a work up moves down, which means that positive times the negative tells you that the gravitational potential energy decreases when a mass moves down. Gravitational force does negative work when a mass moves up. Negative times negative means you have a increase in the gravitational potential energy when a mass moves up. So how do we calculate this out? Well, we had an equation for the work done by the gravitational force. We said that was negative mass times the gravitational acceleration times delta y, where delta y was this vertical displacement and delta y was positive when an object mo moves up and negative when an object moves down. Well, if the change in the gravitational potential energy is negative the work done by gravity, then those two minus signs are, will simply cancel out and I'm left with the change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to positive mass times positive gravitational potential energy times delta y which again is either plus or minus depending on whether your object has moved up or down. So again let's check and make sure that this is consistent with what we need it to be in terms of the signs. We know we need the gravitational potential energy to increase when the mass moves up. So when the mass moves up the vertical displacement is positive positive delta y times positive g times positive mass. Sure enough, so we have a positive delta u, which means we have an increase in the gravitational potential energy. So that checks out. Second, we need to decrease in the gravitational potential energy when the mass moves down. When the mass moves down, delta y is negative. Negative times positive times positive. Overall, that gives me something that's negative, which again tells me that the change in the potential, gravitational potential energy is negative, so the potential energy is decreasing. That checks out. Gravitational potential energy remains the same when the mass stays at the same height. Well, if it stays at the same height, then its vertical displacement is zero. The right-hand side is zero, therefore the change in the gravitational potential energy is zero. So sure enough, gravitational potential energy remains the same if the height of the object doesn't change. Now, the important thing to remember about this equation is the mass is always positive. The gravitational acceleration, again, this is the magnitude of the gravitational field, that's always positive. It's delta y that can be positive or negative. So like what we talked about before when we talked about calculating the work done by gravity, we can choose to use this equation where we leave the plus or minus sign tucked inside delta y. Or we can make it explicit where that plus or minus sign is. So just like what we did with the work done by gravity where we said, hey, I'm going to multiply mass times g times a positive delta h and then I'm going to take care of the sign out front, I will often choose to do the same thing with the gravitational potential energy. So the change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to plus or minus, and I just need to pick the right sign, mass of the object times the strength of the gravitational field times the vertical distance that, that the mass moves up or down. And so when do I need the positive? When do I need the negative? Well, I obviously need the positive when the mass moves up and the negative when the mass moves down. So that's going to be consistent with my sign notations. Increase 
in the gravitational potential energy when the mass moves up? The answer is yes, because I'm going to put a positive out front. Decrease in the gravitational potential energy when the mass moves down? Again, that's yes, but that's because I'm choosing to put a negative out front. Gravitational potential energy remains the same when the mass stays at the same height. Well, that's about delta H being zero. And so sure enough, if the right-hand side is zero, that tells us that the gravitational potential energy stays the same. So in this particular formulation, we get the same result. The difference, of course, is the mass is still always positive, g is still always positive, but delta H here is also always positive because I'm just taking care of the sign out front. We often talk about the gravitational potential energy. And when we mean the gravitational potential energy, what we really mean is the gravitational potential energy relative to the point where the gravitational potential energy equals zero. It's a long phrase. We never say it, but it's what we always mean. So when, we're t when you're talking about the gravitational potential energy, you always mean the gravitational potential energy relative to a zero point. In a situation what, where we're looking at, where we have a constant gravitational field, we get to pick where the gravitational potential energy equals zero. So I might say, hey, I'm going to let this height be where the gravitational potential energy equals zero. So then if I want to calculate what the gravitational potential energy is of an object at some point relative to that height, I can use this equation where, again, we're going to use the plus or minus based on whether my object is above the height I've picked to be zero or below the height I've picked to be zero. And again, positive mass, positive g, and this is positive h, where h is that distance above or below the zero point. So if I take an object that here is sitting above my zero point, I know I'm going to calculate this with a plus sign. And so when I calculate this out, this is going to be plus mgh, where again, this h is just whatever that distance is. On the other hand, if I've got an object that's down here, again, because it's now below the zero point, I need to use a minus. And again, that minus sign is taking care of the sign correctly. So this is going to be a positive mass times a positive g times a positive h. So these three factors are all going to be positive, And I'm using the minus sign because I know it's below my choice of zero point.